2012 AP Micro FRQ number three. Let's see if we can do it. Underline sh before we start. Sugar's freely traded in the world market. Lower land is a price taker in the world market for some of the sugar is produced domestically while the rest is imported. The world price of sugar is $2 per pound. Yada yada. P PW is the world price. Here's our world price. Let's just understand that most of these uh, world price questions are almost always very, very similar. So once you kind of know one, they all tend to uh, be done somewhat the same way. There's about six of these, I think. So go back and find all of them, work through them, and you'll be golden on this uh, section. So originally we could see, if we want to step back just a little bit, that with no world price, this five would have been our price, and this would have been our quantity. Obviously, that's only involved with domestic supply and domestic demand. That would have been our price, PE, and this would have been our quantity. But when we start trading with the world, the world has cheaper prices than our domestic suppliers do. So what we see is that the price falls to P or the PW. And obviously, our domestic suppliers are only going to supply a smaller amount of this good because the price has fallen. So our domestic suppliers only supply this amount. But our domestic consumers want to consume this amount at that low price. So obviously the difference from 2 to 14 is the imported quantity. So just simply 15, 14 million minus the 2 million that's domestically produced and the imported amount has to be 12 million. Easy enough. Let's get rid of a little bit of this here, clean it up a bit. Now, they come in and they say, Loreland imposes a per unit tariff on sugar imports. That's important. Only on imports are tariffs um, taxed. And the new domestic price, including the tariff, is $4. So we have a new price. Let's just draw it in with our tariff. The new price is $4. Well, can we see, they're asking for identify the new level of domestic production. As, as this price goes from 2 to 4, our producers want to produce more of it. They can make more profit on it, so they're going to produce more. So now domestic production has gone from 0 to 6. But at this new higher price, consumers don't want as much of it. So they're only going to demand $10 million. I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to get rid of that. Now, at this new higher price, 6 is domestically produced, while or we could say this is our quantity supplied, where at 10, this is our new quantity demanded, which leaves us 4 million, which is now imported. And this should make sense. Obviously, our domestic producers are producing more. They're producing six. But at the higher price, our consumers don't want as much of it. They only want 10. So the difference between those two would obviously be four. Our domestic production was six. They want us to calculate the domestic consumer surplus for lower land. But before we do that, let's do number three, because we talked about it just a bit. Calculate the total tariff revenue collected by the government. So we know that 4 million uh, pounds of sugar is now imported. Do we know how much our tariff is? This is the tricky part here. We had originally a low price of two. Then the price went up to four. What we understand here is that difference between those must have been the tariff amount. So the tariff was $2 times the 4 million pounds that was imported. Remember, tariffs are only on imported goods. It is a tax on imported goods. So the amount of government revenue would be the tariff per pound, and the 4 million pounds imported, $8 million. All right, now back to calculate the domestic consumer surplus for Loreland. 
So understand that at this $4 price here, that everything, the way we say consumer surplus is everything above the price, but below the demand curve. It's all of that area, right? So I'm going to make it a little bit thicker here to show you. Um, our consumer surplus, that's way too thick, but I'm just going to go with it. It's like a big caterpillar. So all of this area now is consumer surplus. Oh, I hate that. I can't let it sit there like that. That's terrible. Uh, let's do a little smaller. Let's try something like that, see if it works. Um, all right. Yeah, that's better. The other one is ridiculous. All right, this is all our consumer surplus. Understand that consumer surplus is everything above the price, but below the demand curve. Our price is $4, tick, 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 straight across. And our demand curve goes up to nine. So all of that area. Can we see that if we're trying to calculate this, we just go from our price up to where our height would be from four to nine. Is that five, I believe? And then our base is from zero to 10. So this is just a triangle. So it's one half base times height, right? Or we could say since our height was five, our base was 10, that would give us 50, and then divide it by two, or times 0 0.5, whatever, you, whatever makes you happy there. 25 million is our area of consumer surplus. Can we see that? All right. Um, the last one is a tricky one. They always, on these questions, tend to have, I don't know what I'm doing, give me a second. Given the world price of $2, what per unit tariff maximizes the sum of Laura Land's domestic consumer surplus and producer surplus? So, really, we're sort of asking about what's the net gain here? What would we do? What tariff would maximize consumer and producer surplus? Understand that if I give you a supply and demand curve, and I ask you that same question, where is consumer surplus and producer max, consumer and producer surplus maximized? It is right there where PE and QE come together. So the idea here is that no tariffs would the, the idea of a tariff of zero, let me say it like that, uh, would maximize consumer surplus and producer surplus. So just recognize this. That once they trick you one time with this question, they'll never do it again. If we want maximization of consumer and producer surplus, we would have zero tariffs. We could also say zero tax. We could say zero price floors. We could say zero price ceilings. And all of those would give us dead weight loss. The only way to have a maximum of consumer and producer surplus is no dead weight loss, which means no tariffs, no tax, uh, producing where supply and demand meet. All right. I hope that's clear. Any questions, just send me a quick text. Um, uh, any suggestions, just put them in the chat. All right, my friends, take care, be safe, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.